Trail is one of the most important parameters on a motorcycle. It affects the stability, the agility, the responsiveness, and getting it right is going to be absolutely paramount to getting the most out of your motorcycle on track. So my name is Aaron from Zero One Racing, and in this video we're going to be looking at trail, rake, offset, uh, what they actually are and what effect they have on the bike. So let's first have a look at what trail actually is. So if we imagine a line through the centre of our steering stem, this is our steering axis. This is the axis which the front wheel, the triple clamps, the forks all rotate around when we steer the bike. So the angle from our steering axis to the vertical is our rake angle. And the distance from the steering axis to the centre line of our forks is our offset. So if we measure along the ground from our front wheel contact patch to where the steering axis intersects the ground, this is our trail value. Or to be more specific, it's our ground trail value. So when we talk about trail, this almost always means ground trail, but there is another type of trail, and this is called normal trail or real trail, and this is the perpendicular distance from the contact patch to the steering axis. Now here's the slightly confusing part. As trail is essentially the leverage that forces acting at the contact patch have around the steering axis, then this leverage value is actually the normal trail and not the ground trail. This is because in the equation for torque force, the distance term is the perpendicular distance from the force line to the point where the object pivots around. So if we wanted to calculate the realigning torque force that we get as a result of trail, we would actually have to use the normal trail value. However, if we're simply talking about the size of the trail number and the amount it's changed, and we're not actually using the numbers for further calculations, then it really doesn't matter which value we use. So what really matters when talking about bike setup is consistency. Ground trail is most commonly used, and when you hear just the term trail, it almost always refers to ground trail. So for bike setup purposes, I generally recommend sticking to this. So let's now look at the things which affect our trail. So when our rake angle increases, we get a larger trail value. But when our offset increases, the trail value reduces. And finally, a larger front tyre size will give us a larger trail value. So the rake angle, the offset and the front tyre size all contribute to our resulting trail value. When we talk about tyre size, because it's the radius from the contact patch to the wheel axle, then the amount the tyre is compressed at any point will also affect the trail value. Also, it's possible for our tyre contact patch to be in a different location. For example, if we hit a bump in the road, this will also affect our trail value. Now to better understand what the trail is actually doing, we need to look from above. So when a disturbance tries to misalign the front wheel, lateral frictional force acts at the contact patch and generates a realigning torque force. And this tries to pivot the front wheel back in line with the direction of travel and therefore generates this stabilising effect. The greater the trail, the greater this realigning torque force is and the more stable the system is. Although, as mentioned earlier, if you were actually going to calculate this realigning torque force, it would be the normal trail value you would use and not the ground trail. So, how does trail affect the bike on track? We need trail for stability. It keeps the bike wanting to continue in the direction of travel when disturbances try to misalign the front wheel. So, this is perfect when we're travelling at speed down the straight, but what happens when we get to a corner and we want to lean the bike in? Trail is now going to be fighting us as we intentionally try to steer the bike, so having too much trail won't give you the agility you need to effectively corner. As always, it's a trade-off with trail to find the right balance of stability and responsiveness, and the best setting is the one that works the best throughout the whole lap to give us the fastest lap times. As our rake angle is dependent on how much the front and rear suspension is compressed at any one time, this means that our trail value is also constantly changing throughout the whole lap. Analyzing the trail on zero chassis allows us to know the trail with any bike setup and at any point of suspension travel. Also, we can view the bike in different modes, acceleration, braking, cornering, and the 1G position to see how the trail varies. So in its basic form, more trail equals more stability and less trail equals more agility. However, in reality, when fine tuning the trail setup, especially at the highest levels of racing, it's not always completely intuitive as to how a particular change to the trail setup will perform for a rider. So rider feeling, how the tyre is loaded, 
and the rest of the bike's geometry all play a crucial role in the end performance. And although it's really important to understand the fundamentals of trail and what it does, but the results can still sometimes be surprising. So I hope this has helped you to better understand trail. Make sure to subscribe and follow Zero One Racing on social media for our latest content.